Today's video is sponsored by Aura, and it's a really important time to be talking about them because hackers may have stolen the social security numbers of every American. I know in this video we are talking about how around 300,000 people have been affected by Avis's data breach, but check this out. Over 2.9 billion records were stolen from the National Public Data, which provides personal information to employers and others doing background checks. These stolen records include a person's full name, address, date of birth, phone number, and most importantly, social security number. And members of the hacker group have reportedly released this information for free online. Now, this could be incredibly dangerous to you because people can open up all different type of things in your name and you won't even know it. If you weren't taking precautions with your personal information online before this, then this should be a huge wake up call. You've never been more vulnerable online than you are right now. But I'm not too worried about that because I use Aura. Aura monitors your personal data, including your social security number across billions of data points like the dark web and public court records to detect and alert you to potential identity theft. They give you up to $5 million in identity theft insurance should the worst case scenario happen. They also provide a bunch of other features to keep you safe online, all inside one app. You can go to my link right now, aura.com forward slash textual chatter to try 14 days for free. That'll be enough time for Aura to find out if any of your personal data is exposed. I highly recommend you do this right now because not only is the national public data not going to do anything to help you, they probably aren't even going to face any repercussions for this leak. I'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches. If you don't want either, you can go to aura.com forward slash textual chatter to try two weeks for free. Now back to the video. There are so many different use cases just over privacy. What's happening with our data, like those all those social security numbers. Like every time something happening, Change healthcare, say 100 million people affected. Every, listen, I'm so tired of getting an email about a data breach. I'm so like, what are y'all doing? And what are the cons? What as a consumer, right? Because I already monitored my credit. Now. I don't want that. Right. I want money. And I don't want, I, I don't want $25 either. Yes. I want racks. Okay. Give everybody affected racks. I bet y'all stop doing that now. That's what I'm saying. Because they got in because somebody didn't have MFA on, I think it's like a Linux machine. Mm hmm. And then they start moving through the, through the, what you call it, through the environment. But the whole funny thing about that whole freaking incident is they paid the money, then the groups that's working with each other, somebody ran off on with the money, so some people didn't ever get the money. Did they lock it down again? This I mean, stuff they, be better than, like, reality TV if you actually like, start following this stuff. Yeah, like, these, like, think about it. There's no honor amongst thieves, so why would a thief promise to give you a cut of the money? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I always crazy. tell people about, think about, too, our critical infrastructure. Remember mm -hmm. that time when there was a ransomware attack on the gas? It was a gas or oil oh, the colonial pipe. Colonial thing. pipe. Yeah. People could not get gas. Mm -hmm. And this is a trickle effect. So now truck, like people can't deliver food. It's just, it was crazy. And I said, but I want people to think about that on a much larger scale. Yeah. That's just, and we glossed over it when we saw about the hundred million people affected. Not only was people that out there, there were days and weeks people couldn't even get their prescriptions filled. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, I try to, I want, I like for people to think more out just outside of just the, oh, the spam text messages or the email. Think about an the electrical real grill grid in the U.S. Yeah, we'd be cooked. And it's weak. They know it's weak and they always and attacking it. Oh my God. And I think too, that is the way for, for war. Because yeah, bringing down an electrical grid in the U.S., it would be, and think about that's like for a week, seven days. Full on pandemic. People can't like hospital. Like, I don't even think it got to be seven days. I honestly think it could be a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Remember when the, what happened with the FA? The, the remember planes couldn't take off and land. Oh, you talking point, about? Um, I'm just saying, like, just think of different things too. Yeah, you're thinking about what happened with the Microsoft and CrowdStrike. It was a was and, it a patch that. It was a patch, and some of the companies didn't have like up to date systems, and they didn't have good IT teams. It's all the, the disaster recovery, your change plan, management mm -hmm. process, like also like. For whatever reason, CrowdStrike was granted a, a kernel level access that no other platform has, and that, that happened like a lot of different lawsuits. Like, it was crazy. I know, and that's why I tell people this is the field to get in. It's not going anywhere. Right. It's not going anywhere. We still haven't even touched on quantum computing mm -hmm. and the encryption that they think is gonna how it's gonna break the encryption. I think it's gonna. It is. The federal, like, we are actually doing activities and, that are working to understand what quantum computing is and how we can get in front of it. Because and I think everybody's in on that. I know IBM has, uh, what, Watson? Mm -hmm. And I know Watson beat the best chess player in some. Really? Whatever. I think so. Uh huh. A while ago. So I'm like, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm low key. I ain't nobody like trying to live in the iRobot times. Elon, just That's what I'm the about. 
I'm me like, either. I'm not. I'm not. Because I looked at it too from not out of a cyber perspective. I looked at it a realistic perspective. We covered this what, last week, I think, Destiny and I did. And we're talking about how the robots aren't going to cost that much. It's going to be like 29 Gs. Mm. That's like buying another car. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let's do the math. People say, okay, cool. You know what? I don't want to hire people no more. I'm going to hire the robots. So I can hire them. At, I could pay for them in the beginning, and that's going to be much cheaper for me. I don't have to pay them no payroll once I thought I pay for them. Same thing. I saw they have a robot that does lashes, robots that do nails. They're doing like the bartending. Yeah, they got them robots at McDonald's. Yes. So that's all. I'm one of the people, I'm one of the few people who are like, I hate grocery shopping. I'm like, fam, y'all raised the prices, and now I'm checking out my own food. <laughs> I need a discount for checking myself out. Mm-hmm. It don't make sense. How am I paying most, and I'm to checking do the myself work. out? And we waiting in lines when y'all can just have cashiers. Yeah, See, back in the day, it used to be like one or two self-checkouts. Cool. And then five. Then you had express line. lanes, and right. you had regular cashiers. I'm like, go back to that. I like interacting with the people when I check out. I don't. Want to do this, forcing me to. If that's the case, get rid of all the self checkouts and just put all the apps on, like all the apps with the shopping stores we got, and let me check out as I'm shopping. Yeah. What's Amazon? Is it Amazon? I think Amazon. I think yeah, Costco you just got go something in and like out. that. You just in and out. You just charge her. Yeah. I think Costco got something like that. Like, just do that then. This goes back to what I said, like the convenience, innovation, like what, like we. Something we, always suffers. Yes. There's a tug and pull there. What do you get? Like, I know we're getting off the rails here, but it's, this is probably, like, such a, a millennial-based, like, conversation. conversation. But, like, <laughs> even the, the convenience of Netflix is cool. But think about when you was younger, when it was fun to go to the movies, or you went and got a movie from Blockbuster or Hollywood yeah. Video. The time you spent with the family, yep. the popcorn, and all that good stuff. Like, that stuff don't really exist no more. Or kids going outside and playing and not being on their iPads all day. Yeah. That's like a, that's like a catch 50-50, because these people out here crazy. They can't drive. You in the house and your kid didn't got hit by a car. Yeah. But I also think at a certain age, like a kid shouldn't be outside by themselves. Yeah. Also, too, I, there was a time when a lot of us were playing video games as well, but we definitely went outside. Yeah, we had a good balance. Like I, my little girl, she likes it now, but like she also likes to go run around and mm-hmm. play and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was just different. I mean, we was motivated too. I mean, shoot, these little boys and girls are scared to talk to each other. Yeah. They'll rather send somebody a DM, hey, I saw you at school yesterday. No, but my friend's son had like homecoming and they had the regular homecoming party, like dance and all. And then they had a separate homecoming for like introverts. And like, they went, I said, what? They too accommodating. Man, listen, you got y'all done that dance floor and <laughs> make Jeez. some shit. Some, some, I ain't going to lie. You be a wildfire, but someone make you move, some start twerking on you. <laughs> You'll probably get out there eventually. Yeah. So it's very interesting, but. It's all in technology, the effects of technology. 